1931's Dracula is a historic film in many ways. It was one of the first horror films from Universal Pictures, and it launched an empire of horror films after its success. Because of this movie, Universal went on to make many other classics such as Frankenstein, The Wolfman, The Mummy, Bride of Frankenstein, and The Invisible Man. Though Universal did some horror films during the silent era, it was Dracula and its success as their first speaking horror movie that launched the monster genre that dominated in the 1930s. It is also historic as the film that launched Bela Lugosi's career. He had appeared in other films, but mostly either silent, foreign, or both. But is Dracula a good film? While many consider it to be a timeless classic, others feel that the film feels stuffy and pretentious, and that Lugosi is more silly than scary. Though I can see where they get silly from, with the movie's rubber bats and Lugosi's goofy stare, I can't agree that the film is boring or pretentious, and I find it to be a good film even today. Lugosi, of course, plays Count Dracula, who starts off as a kind but eccentric nobleman, and becomes increasingly sinister as the movie goes on. The scenes where he's stalking his prey are excellent, as he slowly moves towards them with his hand outstretched and a look of absolute wrath on his face. That's good shit. Lugosi's Dracula isn't physically horrifying like Max Shrek's. As a matter of fact, he comes off charming at times. One of my favorite scenes is after Dracula meets Jonathan, Mina, and Lucy for the first time, and Mina and Lucy have a conversation about him. Mina does an impression of Dracula and makes fun of Lucy for having an obvious crush on him. It's little touches like that that make the characters good. They go beyond simple archetypes. I mean, if you met a strange count from Romania, you'd probably make fun of him behind his back, too. One thing that's interesting is Jonathan Harker, who is the main character from Nosferatu, as he was in the novel, but in this film, is a pretty minor character. The trip to Dracula's castle and back to England by ship is taken instead by Renfield, who was a minor role in Nosferatu. Kind of interesting the way they switched roles. Dwight Fry's performance as Renfield is absolutely mesmerizing, and believe it or not, he's the highlight of the film. Renfield starts off as a simple real estate agent going to meet Dracula to sell him Carfax Abbey. In the beginning, Renfield is the stock normal character amidst the superstitious Romanians. Compared to their tales of phantoms and vampires, Renfield seems like the most sane person in the world. So, ironically, he becomes a raving lunatic. Fry plays both sides of the character extremely well, and he steals every scene he's in. Another good performance is Edward Van Sloan as Professor Van Helsing. He's a professor who has his work cut out for him in convincing the rest of the cast that vampires exist and that Dracula is one. I love the scene where Dracula tries to hypnotize him, and Van Helsing manages to resist. It's a very tense moment that is done without words. That's not to say that Dracula is without flaws. The movie does have some questions that are left unanswered, like what happens to Lucy after Dracula is killed. The film hinted at her vampirism, but she never appears after her death, and her fate is left up in the air. Another thing I always wondered about is Dracula's brides. He's shown to have three wives, but when taking his trip to England, he only brings three boxes of soil. What, is he leaving one of them behind to watch his castle? But you never see the wives again after the one scene, and they're never mentioned again. The ending can also be fairly abrupt, with Dracula being killed off off-camera, and no denouement at all. 
Some have said that Dracula is a very transitionary film, as it still owes much to the silent era in its storytelling style. The film also is completely devoid of music, at least in its original form, though later home video releases have added a soundtrack. I find this to be a bit jarring, especially after the silent films, which had no sound other than music. As music is an important part of building suspense, atmosphere, and terror in these sorts of movies, I recommend finding a version with music rather than one without music. With all this being said, Dracula is still an excellent film, and despite the plot holes I mentioned, it is, at the least, equal to Nosferatu in terms of overall quality. Therefore, I award it the same score, a 7 out of a possible 10.